Breaking into the weapons manufacturing industry can be daunting for any nation, as more than resources, expertise, technology, and financial backing are needed to guarantee success. South Korea has found several obstacles in its quest to emerge as a new global weapons leader capable of competing with American and European firms. In 2009, the Asian nation poured millions of dollars into developing the K-21 infantry fighting vehicle, a next-generation infantry transport vehicle that met every single NATO requirement, sometimes even surpassing them. Despite being called by some military analysts the most protective infantry fighting vehicle in the world, and arguably the best overall, South Korea struggled to sell the vehicle overseas, with most potential clients choosing American or German alternatives. Even so, South Korea seized a new opportunity to showcase the might of its remarkable vehicle and submitted the design of a heavily modified K-21 in 2019. Codenamed AS-21 Redback, it would compete in the Australian Army's Land 400 Phase 3 IFV competition. The international venture resulted in a mighty infantry fighting vehicle that is as effective, lethal, and overwhelming as the Outback Spider the vehicle is named after. Sixty-year-old technology. For decades, the Australian Armed Forces have attained most of its weapon systems from American or European manufacturers. Infantry fighting vehicles were no exception, with the backbone of the IFV used by the Australian Army being an Aussie modification of the ancient American M113. The Australian government finally decided in 2018 that the M113 AS4 IFV had to be replaced. The American infantry platform goes back to the 1960s, and its deployment by the Australian Armed Forces was expected to cease by 1995. A total of 413 M113s continue to serve as the main IFV of the Australian Armed Forces, but the aging platform is quickly becoming a hurdle in the path of the Australian military as most other forces in the world adopt much more recent technology. Australia wants to deploy a new IFV by 2025 and stop using the M113 AS4 by 2030. An army spokesman claimed that the M113 would continue to be used in a limited fashion as the new vehicle was deployed. Quote, the M113s are not expected to be deployable for anything other than low-intensity or low-risk missions beyond 2025. Almost 27 years later, the M113 is still being used by Australia as it evaluates possible candidates for a suitable replacement, capable of delivering the formidable performance that the brutal and challenging battlefields of the 21st century demand. As it did before, Australia turned to Europe and the US in search of a modern and reliable IFV that met the Australian Army's peculiar requirements and their country's territorial characteristics. Initially, Australia felt inclined to adopt the highly successful German Rheinmetall Lynx IFV, which had been in service with the German Army since 2015. But as they began to conduct a series of tests on the German Lynx, they were approached by a South Korean corporation and an utterly groundbreaking project. A South Korean Marvel The South Korean corporation Hanwha Defense approached Australia with a proposal based on a Korean infantry fighting vehicle from 2009. During the early 2000s, South Korean weapons manufacturers became a crucial cog in the country's bid to enter the global arms development market. Heavily supported by government funding, the Doosan DST Corporation designed an ambitious and powerful infantry fighting vehicle constructed to meet every NATO requirement and even surpass the performance of current NATO solutions. Offering unparalleled protection to its crew and passengers, state-of-the-art electronic warfare capabilities, amphibious functionality, and a powerful K-40 40mm autocannon reaching speeds of over 43 miles per hour, the South Korean K-21 seemed like a more than worthy vehicle to compete with even the most robust IFV. 
The K-21 is like modern NATO fighting vehicles like the Bradley, Warrior, and the CV-90 in more than one way. It has a three-man crew, an autocannon, tracks, anti-tank missiles, and complements for a modified squad of soldiers in the back. But the South Korean engineers went beyond what would produce merely a copy of what NATO had and began to look for ways to improve it. For the country to become a significant player in the weapons development market, it had to produce something valuable to the world. For that, it needed its IFV to go beyond all expectations. For starters, the K-21 was fully amphibious, so it could easily navigate the numerous wide rivers that crisscrossed the Korean peninsula. And it was built to transport the fighting citizens of a free democracy, a valuable resource that had to be dearly protected. As such, the vehicle was fitted with the armor of a heavy tank. A blend of reinforced aluminum, ceramic tiles, and fiberglass rated to resist armor-piercing rounds from 30mm autocannons gave the K-21 a similar survivability rate as the Bradley, while also remaining faster and more maneuverable than the American vehicle. With a 740-horsepower V10 diesel engine, the South Korean solution achieved a formidable power-to-weight ratio of 29.2 horsepower per ton. At the same time, the latest A3 version of the Bradley has a ratio of only 19.7. Against all odds, the South Koreans had arguably produced the world's most influential and protected IFV. Enter the Redback. As promising as the South Korean vehicle looked, no one wanted to buy it. Most nations looking to acquire new IFVs continued to buy American or German platforms, and South Korea struggled to find buyers for its superb vehicle. In the end, the IFV was used in their army, and the South Koreans accepted there was little demand for their infantry vehicle. However, the situation took a drastic turn when Hanwha Defense bought the Doosan DST Corporation, and with that, the K-21 IFV. Hanwha Defense is part of the massive Hanwha conglomerate, a multi-billion dollar group that dominates the financial scene in South Korea and many neighboring countries. It made headlines for buying the tech giant Samsung in 2014. Initially, the conglomerate made no efforts to export the K-21 in massive numbers. Nevertheless, when the Australian military issued Project Land 400 in 2018 and asked for submissions for a new IFV to replace its old M113s, Hanwha Defense decided to rework the K-21 scheme and create the ultimate modern infantry fighting vehicle, explicitly designed to meet the Australian Army's needs. Named after a lethal native Australian spider capable of taking a man's life with a single bite, the AS-21 Redback takes everything that made the K-21 so impressive in 2009 and improves it radically. Its armor protection feature has been increased to provide everyone inside the vehicle comprehensive protection against ballistic, mine and chemical, biological, radiological, and nuclear threats. The vehicle will be updated to 21st century warfare with the inclusion of a state-of-the-art digital battle management system and electronic warfare capabilities. In addition, an in-arm type hydro-pneumatic suspension unit and better designed interiors will make crew and passenger transportation safer and more comfortable. At the same time, its 1,000 horsepower MTU 8-cylinder diesel engine will continue to move the 42-ton vehicle at speeds over 40 miles per hour for over 340 miles. Armed with an MK-44S 30mm cannon, a MAG-58 7.62mm coaxial machine gun, 76mm multi-barrel smoke grenade dischargers, and two spiky LR-2 missile launchers, the Redback promises to finally bring the full potential of the K-21, as well as of South Korean engineering, into the global stage. The project is ambitious, but preceded by the remarkable K-21 IFV design. If things go according to Hanwha Defense's plan, the Asian firm could soon become a household name in armored vehicle design, marking a turning point in the history of global weapons manufacturing. Thank you for watching Dark Tech. Make sure to subscribe so you can catch all of our videos. And for more fascinating wartime stories, 
click on your screen and check out another of our Duck Documentaries channels, where we publish regularly. Stay tuned.